Maybe you were stopped along the street and forced to do a spike. <laughs> and now you're interested, you searched everywhere, and you got your first kendama. Now you are in the right place. And today in this video, we are gonna be learning the five most important tricks for a beginner kendama player to learn. Before we dive into that, let's talk about what a kendama actually is. It is a Japanese skill toy consisting of the ken and the tama, the ken being the handle part with the three cups all ranging in different sizes, a spike where you can land the ball on top of with the hole there. This is called the tama and together connected by a string, all of it is a ken dama. Using a kendama, you can do all sorts of crazy juggling and balance tricks the possibilities are limitless. intimidating, but I promise with enough practice and time, you can get there as well. Right before we jump into the top five, let's talk about some common grips to hold the kendama in. The main grips you're going to want to focus on in the beginning is going to be ken grip, sara grip, and tama grip. Now, to get the most out of this video, make sure you grab your kendama, Practice putting them in these different grips and just feeling what they feel like in your hand. Now that you have your grips figured out, we're gonna jump into the first trick you want to learn as a beginner kendama player. That is going to be the big cup. To successfully land a big cup, all you have to do is simply pull the tama up along the string and land it right in the big cup. Some of the most common mistakes I see when people are trying the big cup is they don't steady their ball, meaning it's kind of flailing all over the place, or they're trying to swing the ball up into the cup. Both of those are a no. You actually want to use your left hand that's not doing anything to stabilize the ball. Make sure it's nice and steady before you pull up. That will help everything be nice and smooth and you won't have any wobbles on the way in. Another mistake I see is people letting the Tama smash into the big cup with a lot of force. The more gentle you are catching that ball into the cup, the easier of a time you're going to have. I like to think of the ball as an egg and you want to be nice and delicate, giving it lots of cushion so it doesn't break on the way in. This will help you just lock in your big cups and will also help you down the road throughout your Kendama journey with every single trick. Cushion is a must. So putting all of that together and getting the perfect big cup, what you want to do is hold that kendama in ken grip, like I said, hang your ball straight down. If it has any type of wobble, use your other hand to just steady that. Make sure it's nice and smooth. You're gonna use your knees and your whole body to pull that ball up into the air. As soon as it's at its maximum height, that's when you wanna slide the ken right under the ball, letting the two pieces connect, engage your knees, and cushion all the way to the ground and you've got yourself a perfect big cup. Now that you've done big cup, it's time to jump on to trick number two, the spike. The spike is also performed in ken grip, just like the big cup. You are going to want to hang the tama just like so. You're going to pull the ball up into the air, landing the whole of the ball onto the spike, and that is your spike. The most common mistake with spike is people not getting the tama steady, just like big cup, but it is even more important with the spike. You have to make sure it is completely still when you pull up that spike. This will help the hole have no wobble and you can get the can right under it and let it all fall into place. When getting the perfect pull up, I like to imagine an imaginary line where the string is and this is going to be the motion of what my hand is doing perfectly up and down along the line of the string. Before you even pull the tama into the air, just practice going up and down and keeping that tama nice and steady. When you're finally ready, give a little bit of knees and a little more power. Get that tama up into the air and let it fall right under the spike. 
If you've made it this far, then you have learned two tricks. Make sure to grab your kendama and go practice those before jumping into this next section. Trick number three, we're jumping into Moshikame in Sara Grip. Moshikame is the most traditional Japanese trick you can learn. It consists of juggling the cup back and forth between the big cup and the bottom cup. In order to successfully start doing Moshe Kame, you are going to have to get it into the first position. And that is going to be very similar to the big cup. So you want to let it hang down. You're going to have your big cup facing up and just like the big cup, pull it up into the air, use your knees. That cushion is going to help you immensely. Get it to your big cup. And from there, you're going to start alternating your wrist. I like to think of it as just turning a door handle 90 degrees up to the top and this is where the knees and the cushion is going to come in immensely. You're going to create a rhythm with your body going up and down as you switch between the two cups. One of the most common mistakes I see in Moshe Kame is people trying to launch the ball up into the air onto the next piece, opposed to kind of just letting the ball float there in one spot and moving the can around it. This is going to help you immensely down the road and get your kendama skills to the next level. The biggest tip I can give you for keeping that Tama kind of in the same spot and starting to move around it is to not even worry about switching the cups, but simply putting it into the big cup and just letting it float back into the big cup over and over. Moshikame is a super fun trick and it helps you start getting into the rhythm of Kendama. Get out there, grab your Kendama, practice the Moshikame. Once you can get it five times, I'd say you're ready to move on to the next portion of this video. Trick number four. Trick number four is a trick called baseball. This is a very fun beginner trick and it is also going to be started in Sara Grip. Much like Moshe Kame, you're going to pull up to the big cup to start it, except this time, instead of popping it up to the base cup, you're actually going to use the base cup to push the kendama out to the side and you're going to get your first introduction into string play. You're going to let the Tama swing underneath the Ken and you're going to try it to catch it back onto the big cup. One of the common mistakes I see in baseball is people not hitting the Tama hard enough with the base cup and it kind of gets this dinky little half fall and the swing is a little wobbly and sloppy and doesn't quite come around perfectly. You actually wanna get a nice solid connection, get that Tama all the way out to the left side horizontally, get it to connect the string all the way taut before you engage the swing. This will help you get a nice smooth swing and you can pop it easily back into the big cup. One of the fundamentals of all kendama tricks is breaking down the trick into different sections. So for baseball, for example, I would recommend breaking it down into two main pieces, the tap and the swing. So practice just tapping the ball with your base cup, getting a nice clean tap. After you've practiced that and gotten nice and cozy and comfortable with that, you can just hold the tama in your left hand pull it all the way out to the side and just practice the swing into the big cup. Once you're ready to connect both pieces, you've got yourself a complete baseball. Now that you've got baseball down, we're gonna jump into trick number five, the last trick of the video and the last grip that we haven't gone into yet. This is going to be in Tama grip and a trick called airplane. When landing an airplane, once you have gotten the spike into the hole, the ideal position you want this to be in is just like so. Everything aligned so that if you were to flip it, the big cup would be facing you and you can just go off very smoothly from here and not have too many hiccups with string and spinning and all sorts of craziness. What you want to do for this type of airplane is to hold the Tama out in front of you. You're going to use your non-dominant hand, pull slightly back from center, I like to have the string hole here facing into my body. I'm going to give the Ken a slight twist with my fingers here as it's swinging through the bottom of its swing. Once it's reached the other side as well as made a 90 degree turn, 
I give a nice tug on the tama and it goes into the hole, perfectly aligned, just how I want it set up for future tricks. The most common mistake I see when people are doing airplane is they're not getting a smooth swing through the bottom, meaning when they release the ken with their non-dominant hand, they've pulled up slightly somewhere and it's got this little wobble to it as it's swinging through and it's just not quite swinging properly. So you wanna make sure you get just a nice dainty grip on the ken as you release so it has no wobble through the swing. This is going to help you when you pull from the other side to make it come up nice and smooth. Again, break this trick down into components. Practice just the swing, then maybe practice the tug. When you're finally ready, put it all together. Watch that spike go into the hole and you've got yourself an airplane and you have now landed all five of the beginner tricks. You have now learned the five beginner tricks of kendama and started your kendama journey. There are literally infinite possibilities of tricks to go out there and learn. We have a bunch of other tutorials you can check out for higher level play if you wanna go learn some more tricks. Get out there, perfect your kendama game, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.